Well, hey there, guys. Well, we got the uh, 2005 Lincoln Town Car in the shop. Uh, you know, I procrastinated long enough. It's time now that I uh, get this intake put on. Um, it has a crack somewhere in it. I, I can't see it. But we're going to get that taken care of uh, in this video. And get it back on, get it up running, and back on the road again. So, you know, stay tuned for the fun and festivities at Double Trouble Garage. Well, guys, like I said, I can't believe how how long it's been that I've had this this thing sitting um, I, I got to get it back on the road I want to drive it again um, it's gonna it's gonna be nice um, I know I still have a little bit of a steering issue with it um, but uh, it, it's nothing a rack and pinion can't fix but we need to get this intake on here and what it seems like it's doesn't seem like but it is doing back here in the very back something back here is whenever the thermostat opens it just Niagara Falls water out and I uh, I have just about all water in here now because it's I've refilled it with water just to get it moved around the yard a few times and uh, I need to get that water out and get some antifreeze back in it get this thing fixed Anyway, uh, I've been putting off tackling this thing, guys, because I didn't want to be leaning over. I know my back's going to be hurting me for 15 days afterwards. So what I did was I purchased this uh, over-the-engine, uh, whatever you want to call it, over-the-engine thing, uh, creeper. Yeah, that's what you call it. A creeper and I'm gonna be utilizing it it's made for trucks but I believe I can get it low enough to go ahead and work on this um, on this car and you know it'll it'll save my back so let's get it set up and let's see how it even looks well that's the way it looks um, yeah i've been up there um it's it's different i will grant you that i would like it to go down a little bit further and i could make some alterations in this thing i could put here's the pins that lock it in i could put some some other holes up here and then i would have to C notch that for that bolt a little bit higher than they have it C notched. But I don't know if I'm going to go through all that. I may just go ahead and do it the old fashioned break back and way. Um, let me get some light underneath there. Yeah, well, that's a whole lot better. Um, yeah, these. These under hood lights and things are a game changer right there. Of course, this is a Craftsman. Um, I do have a Craftsman charger, but I also have an adapter like I have on my Craftsman blower here. And that adapts the battery to uh, a DeWalt. So <clears throat> if I run out, then I can go ahead and uh, run out of juice. I can put my DeWalt 5 amp hour on there and I'll be good anyway let's get this thing torn off let's let's start tearing into it well guys i'm going to try to go ahead and use this uh, see how it works out all you need to get is a quarter inch drive uh, ratchet and extension and you can take this Take this cover right off with it. I have also used a 
small bladed screwdriver before. Anything that'll fit in there. And that, that'll take them off if they're not too tight. And these are supposed to pull forward. Take it right off. What I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to put all these nuts and bolts back in their place. And that'll save me from having to drop them in a bucket somewhere. All right, I moved that uh, contraption out of my way because now I'm going to get over here to the alternator. And I think it'll be easier without that thing. Um, I got to disconnect my battery first, even though there's no voltage in it. Well, right here, I'm going to be uh, disconnecting the battery. And uh, after I get that done, after finding uh, a new battery for my tool, I'm going to disconnect the alternator. All right, these look like they're a 10. And they are a 10. Let's see, what is it? Is this a 10 too? Oh, 10 also. Yes. That's good. Now, we can just yank that alternator right off of there after we uh, go ahead and take the tension off the belt. So I went and got my long handle 3 8 ratchet. And I'm just going to take the tension off of here and drop this belt right down. Now you're going to watch you're going to watch some other YouTube channels and uh, going to see other people that they take this belt all the way off and make a big elaborate deal about it. But guys, you don't have to do all that. This, this whole process, I'm going to show you some shortcuts and some pro tips. You don't have to take that belt all the way off unless you're going to be replacing it. Leave that sucker right there. It's not going to be in your way. And then take the alternator off. Uh, the belt will be there when you get back to it, and it'll be in the same position. Alright. Taking a few seconds more to put these bolts back in their place. Even though this intake is uh, coming off, I know. I'll be switching it later. you can see it but I got uh, two bolts right down in the bottom they're right down here got one here we got one right here very easy to get to they look like they could be a 13 or a 14 we are going to go with green, guys, which is 13. And looky there, the 13. So a 13 is equivalent to a half inch, in case you all want to know that. Is my battery dead already? All right, on the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. Huh, I wonder what Willie Nelson's doing right now. Uh, I guess we all know what Willie Nelson's doing right now. Oh, you know what I forgot, guys? Forgot. You don't have to take these bolts all the way out. And I, I, I just got carried away with my electronic uh, device right there. Well, that didn't sound good. All right. 
Well, let's get this sucker off of here. Sometimes you got to get the little screwdriver here just to work these things out. There we go. We got that out. Now we're going to set this alternator off to the side. All right, first part down. Well, guys, right here I am uh, getting my pliers to go ahead and loosen up the little bung for the radiator to drain the radiator. Um, I should have done that earlier, but uh, I just thought about it, and I need to get that drained so I don't have a big mess whenever I take the intake out. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm going to have to let it drain, and then I'll be getting back with the intake removal. Well, guys, one of the first things you need to do is uh, drain the water or drain the uh, antifreeze before you get started and I, I haven't showed you because uh, I haven't done it yet and I just did it and I want to show you uh, where the uh, petcock is at it's a drain valve for the uh, radiator um, it's pretty easy to get to if you look right down here I don't know if you can you see it at all? It's it's right it's right down there. You gotta look back. Tilt your head a little bit. It's right down straight in there. And uh, it's a little little round valve and you just open it up and the water starts to drain. And mine is just that, and mine is just water with little little hint of the smelly antifreeze but uh that's that's what you got to do but you know you gotta you gotta make sure you don't put the mule before the drivetrain or the the wagon before the chevy motor what forget what way it goes but it's something like that while that's draining I'm going to go ahead and start releasing on some of these uh, hoses here. This is going to have to come off for, for sure. I hate these spring clamps. You know, always hated them. Always will. I know there's a special tool for it because I got one somewhere. But do I hardly ever use it? Nah, I get a pair of pliers and then I fight with it cuss at it. There we go, right there. All right. Oh, that's some corrosion on that. Well, I'm, I'm for certain this is going to have to come off. Take this snorkel off of here. You should be able to do this without turning any bolts or going 
going through a lot of hassle other than these these uh, Ford clips here. All these clips are different guys, so you don't have to really worry about mixing them up. I'm just going to use the smallest screwdriver I got. Notice these connectors had the little tabs you got to pull back before you open them up. They're uh, they're somewhat easier to get off than what the other ones are. I say that, but now this one's going to give me a hassle. You watch. Oh, they come right off. All right, now we've got a work on this side over here and uh, I can already feel my back burning all you got to do with these guys is you lift up on this little tab right here and that takes the pressure off of that it hooks around the back and then you can just pull it right off and all you got to do just spin this right around. Can you see me? Can you see everything I'm doing over here? Right here, let's turn it where you can see a little bit better. Yeah. So that's the little tab right here. You just gotta pull it up, take the tension off of that, and then you can ease them right off. And just just spin them on around. Anything you can avoid taking off, your money ahead. Then you haven't got to worry about it. This one right here. Got to take this off. Well, you know, we may have not really had to take that one off, but because I'm going to I'm going to show you something I'm going, to, I'm going to try. All you have to do is push in this little tab here. Just give it a wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And every one of these connectors are different, like I said. Just put them over here. They'll find their way later. All right, now. I'm going to take this one vacuum line off here for sure. Try to be gentle with these little plastic vacuum lines here because they get brittle. Let me tell you, they love to snap on you. All right. Now, <clears throat> this hose right here. It has to come off. I don't know if you can see it too well. It's, it's kind of a hard one to look at. But 
I'm going to take it off anyway. Take my word for it. I'm taking it off. i got to get my little baby screwdriver. You know these little clips right here it's hard to get these things out without breaking them so you, you got to be really careful with them and then when you're done you just you push them right back in like that and whenever you push push it on it'll just it'll just jump right on there uh, this hose right here I don't know if you notice but <laughs> I took it off they these hoses get really perforated uh, and they start sucking a vacuum on you and they throw a code so uh you know what i just did i taped it all up with black tape <laughs> it's been good already for quite a few years of course i've left it set out part most of them years uh also this this hose right back here in the back that you probably can't see these normally break and i had uh not the hose itself, but the nipple, it breaks, and I drilled it out, and I put a brass fitting in there, uh, and it's work. That that part is work, but it's leaking over there somewhere on that side. Well, let's get let's get these clamps off right here. Why am I even using them pliers? All gone. You know what? Both of them lines, both of them clamps are welded together. So I'm going to have to simultaneously. Unclamp these suckers and bring it back. Look at that. That's the weirdest thing. That's weird. Should have tried twisting on it the first time. All right, let's 
let's tuck this back in here out of the way where we'll never find it again. There we go. Good and out of the way. Woo! All right, well, since we're working just in this area right here on this uh, throttle body, I'm gonna go ahead and take it off and uh, we're gonna we're gonna put it on around but now it's a question of what I want to do um, I, I guess I need to bring you in over here and show you now if you look right in the back there See if I can zoom you in. All right. If you look right there, right there, you see that fitting? Well, that fitting can be a bear. Um, now I can lube it up and I can try to turn it. Of course, I'm going to have to take that that bracket off yeah that bracket's going to be in the way so I'm going to get that bracket off of there but um, that fitting can be a bear now the alternative is I don't know can you see it can you yeah you you got a bird's eye view there um, I can take these two bolts out leave that fitting alone break that throttle well you know not break it literally but take it off and I can still get that intake out just fine. So I'm, I'm not sure which one I'm gonna go for. Um, most, most of the people that do it, they just go ahead and they go for broke. But let me tell you, if you break this off, if you break that tube, you got bigger headaches ahead of you. But I can try it. And we can see what happens. You know, I really did not think these were 10 millimeter, but you know, what does Vice Grip Garage say? I gotta believe it. I'm looking right at it. Well, looky there. get that bolt out of there before we lose it and get this bracket out we'll put it with our collection why not get the easy ones first oh that's not a 10 millimeter oh my goodness well what is it then All right, guys, this is an eight millimeter. Eight millimeter, did you hear me? Well, you know, I don't mind these bolts dropping. They drop where I can get to them, but that other one, it looks like it could go out of my reach before it gets too very far away from me. We got two more. Well, guys, I should be able just to give this thing a little bit of a bump here. Oh, that's right. I haven't taken them. Yep. I'm planning on taking these 
these bolts out, guys. I'm, I don't know if I want to try the other mess. But you know I could try it for y'all. See how it works out. I should have done it before I unbolted it, though. Well, guys, I've just decided to go ahead and take the, these two bolts out and make my life a little bit easier. Wow, if they'll come out. Well, I've decided to put these two bolts back in. Give me some stability. And then I'm going to try to break them other, other uh, bolts loose. Well, guys, I don't know if that, that doesn't look too promising right there. All right, I'm going to go with a little impact action on this thing. See if we can get the vibration going and maybe vibrate it loose. This hose might be, might be in my way, so let me go ahead and take it off. Oh, looky there. I broke it loose. Ah, that one's not one to come off so easy. Yeah, let me spray it with a little bit of lubricant here. All right, I'm going to try going forward and then try going backward. Okay, now backward. Forward, backward. There we go. Sometimes, sometimes you get it like that. Don't ask me why. All right, that makes me happy. Now, the gasket fell right down, so we got to remember to put that the gasket back on there. We will clean it up. It's a little metal gasket, so it is very reusable. We might slather it up with a little bit of uh, sealant. I'm not a real big fan of the RTB sealant okay we might use something else you'll see you'll see all oh, these vacuum lines are molded together too do we have to take that off yeah we do have to take it off. yeah yep yep just fine. 
course that was 17, 18, 22 years ago. All right, so we got that off. Now, that intake should have no problem sneaking up underneath that. I mean, it had to sneak up underneath the pipe anyway. It's uh, pretty much the same thing. So let's take that uh, intake back loose again. Not intake. You know what I mean. Come on. You all know what I mean. I do have another bolt. Guys, there's three bolts on the back side. Well, this one looks a little bit trickier to get to, but I think I can get it. Uh, I'm going to have to give me what they call a wobble extension. Is this a wobble? No. This is a wobble. Okay. I just had it pushed on there a little too far. Yeah, let's see. Well, hey guys, uh, we're back. Uh, camera went dead and I just kept on work and I didn't even know it. And let me show you where we got now. Okay. Here's what we got. Uh, I took the throttle body off. It's sitting over here. Um, I got that off. I think I still have the part uh, on my film where uh, I took uh, the bolts loose for the EGR and I got it separated there. Uh, then I come across this bracket. Well, this bracket right here is, uh, it's a little rough to get off. And there's only, there's only one bolt back here in the back. And it is this one right here. And it's 15 millimeter. And let me tell you, this sucker is, uh, it's hard to get off. Now, what I did was... I, uh, I got a, my stubby back there, and I was able to get my stubby on it, and that was good, all except for breaking it loose. I could not break it loose with that stubby, so I got my, my long Craftsman here, and it's, it's got, it's almost straight. It's, a, it's got a little bit of a, little bit of a wank to it, but, but it's almost straight, and I was able to get it on there. And then I got my pry bar, which is right up there, got my pry bar underneath it, and I pried up on it, and I was able to crack the bolt loose. Well, that was only part of the problem. Uh, I couldn't get my hand back there to go ahead and uh, turn that wrench, and I tried, and I tried, and it was, it was just a, a living uh, nightmare. I tried for about an hour, guys, and um, then my son come out to check on me, and he was able to snake his hand down from this direction, which I have not tried, but, you know, if you've been watching my channel, you know my hands are messed up. That's as straight as they get right there, so it's kind of hard for me to get back there, but he was able to get in there. With my help, I, I got on the other side over here, and I could go in through here. I come in through here with this to hold the wrench on. 
So I held the wrench on the bolt while he was turning it. And at that point, I was using my, uh, which I don't know where it went now. It's a 15 millimeter ratcheting, ratcheting wrench. And God knows where it wound up. I know it did fall on the floor, but I think my son picked it up. Anyway, besides all that, use the ratcheting wrench to go ahead and get it the rest of the way out. Now, let me go ahead and tell you this here. You guys ain't going to like me, but this bracket is probably not going back on the car as we know it. I'm planning on cutting this bracket off right here and this little monstrosity is not going back on. I am only putting this back on because I need to put that bolt back in there because it looks like it looks like it goes down into a water jacket right there and it's one of the bolts that holds the uh, the intake on. So, uh, yeah, it's got to go back in there. Now, why this bracket is here, I have no clue. The bracket holds nothing. The bracket does nothing. Nothing attaches to it except for this long bolt going down into the intake to hold the intake on. And there, there's no excuse for it. Uh, if I could find a reason that that bracket exists for any kind of uh, support or, I mean, look at the heavy dutiness of that, of that bracket right there. But there's no use for it. And I'm not putting it back on. So guys, let's get at it. What I plan to do here is uh, take off the fuel rail fuel rail and uh, I'm gonna you know take off as little as possible so it looks like these are gonna be a what what is this eight millimeter so that's what I'm gonna have to use um, I'm gonna try to unplug just from this side over here because you know how these how these connectors are um, I'm gonna have to end up unplugging all these uh, coil packs and taking them off but the fuel rail I'm not gonna I'm gonna try to not unplug it from the passenger side and and just kind of fold it over that way you know a little less work These, uh, these coil packs come off pretty nice and it's hard to get them mixed up well impossible really because of the uh, location of the of the connectors and all you got to do is push in the little tab and move these off to the side like I said they're pretty much idiot proof. All right, come on there, buddy. There we go. These back ones are a little harder to get to, but they're doable. So all that's unplugged. I'm gonna go ahead and take these, these keeper keeper bolts, take them loose. I think the new kit comes with new bolts, but we're gonna make sure we hang on to these anyway. It looks like I'm gonna have to use a ratchet for the back one.
That's as far as I'm getting to that. All right. That side's done. Let's let's unplug the uh, coil packs on this side and Coil packs are unplugged. Now this this fuel rail here, um, I'm going to try to get by without taking that off. That's uh, that's pressurized, of course, and uh, you can relieve the pressure on on the system, and then go ahead and take this off. But I think I can snake it out of there without doing that, and uh, I might have to take off that one bolt right over here to get it up underneath. But let's see if that'll if that'll work. Um, that way, you guys that don't have the you know the capability or have the special tool to take this quick connect off, you could do this with ease. And it doesn't look like I'm going to have enough wire to play around here, so I'm going to have to unplug these injectors, which is really not that big a deal. I just wanted to try to you know make it easier make life a little bit easier I can't get to that tab with my finger so I'm gonna have to use a screwdriver here there. just push in the tab and wiggle 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 Well, they are all off. Wonder what all that lubricant is back there in the back. I don't know. Well, this thing is ready to pull off. I think I'm going to work on the driver's side first. All right, guys. So I got I got my safety glasses on. safety glasses on too. Alright, I'm going to spray some lubricant in here just to, just to help the process out a little bit. Ain't going to hurt nothing. sprayed the lubricant in there just to make this a little bit easier because it seems like everything on this car has been a little bit tougher than it needed to be um, so all you need to do is wiggle these normally and you should be able to get them to pop right up normally you need to get the front out first just because, well, look at that. Got the back out first. There we go. All right, I got this side all out. Yeah, let's work. You know what? I might need to loosen these up first. I forgot that I didn't do that. I'm gonna go ahead and use the wrench on both of these because 
you know, why well, switch over? Okay. Just wiggle these with a little bit of pressure up. Yeah, well, we left one of them in there, guys. But we can get it out. There we go. And we'll just plug it right back on you. There we go. She's back in and seated. All right, let's snake this out of here. That back line that runs through is just a, uh, a flexible line, so you don't have to really worry too much about it. It's a little, little rough getting around this. Uh... You know what? Thing I'm gonna do make my life a little bit easier. I'm gonna take that coil pack out. I gotta take them all out anyway. It'll make it easier getting around there. And I think I can get that fuel rail out. This is a rubber line and we can just fold it right on over. That way it's getting around, taking off that quick connect. So these bolts are a seven millimeter. Now guys, these coil packs are all the same, so it doesn't matter if you mix them up. This one here was replaced before. I can tell because of the way it is. But it was a little, little hard coming out there. I guess uh, somebody didn't do what I do. I normally put grease around there. Anyhow, that's a little bit corroded. That's a lot of bit corroded. Yeah, that one's okay. And that one's okay. And let me get my bolt out of here before I lose it. Let's see if we can get this snaked out of underneath here. Shouldn't be that hard. Look at that. Now we'll just fold this back out of the way. Thought I'd show you guys. Look how dirty these injectors are. Can you see how dirty they are? We're going to go ahead and do some cleaning on them before we put it all back together we're gonna clean them all up all right let's get the coal packs out of the other side ah 
Ah, somebody threw a curveball here on me. This one right here, guys, has a, a Phillips head screw in it. So evidently somebody lost the bolt or maybe it stripped out and they put an oversized screw in there. Don't know. Well, I have a Phillips screwdriver. We'll go ahead and take it out with this. Or will we? Oh, yeah? Are you serious? Oh, really? Man. Okay. That's all right. Somebody forced it in there, guys. We'll take care of that. Because I have ways to rectify this situation. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, well, let's see how cruddy these are. Well, that's not bad. A little bit of oil on the bottom. Same here. Not bad. Mm -hmm. Not good. That one come apart. Let me get my pliers on that. Oh, that one was corroded too. Yeah, let's go ahead and put this back together before we uh, go any further. All right, good as new. Well, guys, these are a uh, number 10. Wow. And they are on there some kind of good. Nah, I was right, guys. There is four on this side. It was just covered up by a wire. My wire loom. Well, guys, I do not like working with this much junk around and having the uh, injector port open. So I'm going to get me a little, little piece of shop rag or paper towel and stick down in there.
I'm really worried about that back bolt, guys, because that's where the that's where my leak was. So I will bet you that that back bolt is rusted up really good. And we do not really want these snapping off. I want you to get on up in here and see how this is, guys. If I can show you. Uh, look at how this bolt turns just a little bit. See? See, it turns just a little bit and stops. Now we want to keep we want to keep that going and try to work that penetrating oil down in there. But you see that back bolt? See how rusty it is? That's the one I'm worried about. This front one here, it does the same thing. Watch. So we're going to keep hitting that with the old penetrating oil. We're not going to get in a rush with it. Well guys, I didn't want to bore you with all this, so I fast forwarded it. I basically kept uh, trying to work on them bolts. I would uh, twist them forward and twist them backward and twist them forward and backward and kept hitting them with penetrating oil they would move just a little bit and uh, then then they would stop and I wasn't about to twist them off so I just kept working at them every one of them individually until I finally hit pay dirt so um, like I said I didn't want to bore you with it <laughs> Got it. Got it. You see that? It went, uh, see this was all protected right here. And this part of it was down in some kind of corrosion. Don't know where it went if it went, uh, don't know where it went guys. 
I don't know where this goes. But wherever it was, I guess it's under the intake. It went into some corrosion. That's why it was so hard to get out. Be good if I could get and spray up underneath there. If I could find where that was. I might look. Well, guys, I kept doing this with the other side, too. Um, back and forth, pre-soaking, going back and forth with the, with the bolts until I got every one of them out. Um, it was uh, extremely tedious, but uh, it was satisfying when I got them out. Um, this, this car really fought me um, the whole way. I'm thinking it's because of its life that it spent in uh, Daytona Beach next to the salt water and corrosion, but uh, it, really, um, it really fought me. Well, guys, I just want to show you all the mess and all the debris that uh, just come. You just saw me pull it, pull the intake off. There's a piece of plastic trying to go down in my cylinder. There's another piece of plastic over there trying to go in. I'm going to have to carefully pull all that out. And... Uh, there's a port back there in the back, a little bit rusty. That's in that same vicinity where I was getting my leak from this time. Um, you see all the corrosion. So I'm gonna clean all this out. It's gonna be a whole different picture whenever I'm done with it. So guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean all this stuff out. So uh, hey, aren't you proud of me? I'm not a complete hack. Look at that. That broke off of the, uh, the, a lot of people call it a diaper, but that sound deadening material thing that goes up underneath there, you don't get that with the intake. So uh, you best go ahead and save on it and um, put it back on the new one. All it does is it down, uh, deadens the sound that your intake makes when you get on it, that whole sound, it, it makes it more quiet. And uh, it does help. Well, guys, I spent a lot of time vacuuming out and cleaning out every port. Um, I protected uh, each cylinder with uh, the blue shop towel. Uh, Later on, you'll see in this video where I started using the old uh, spinning wheel, the old cheek poker, um, and that that did a really good job in, uh, in cleaning everything up, but uh, I had to really make sure and stuff them shop towels down in there because it kept grabbing them and slinging them all over the place, but at least when it would grab them and pull them up, it would throw the debris out of the cylinder, so that that was a good thing. But uh, I ended up getting it all cleaned up to my satisfaction. There was some pitting that was going on in the back right-hand side cylinder head and up in the front left side uh, cylinder, uh, or we'll call it a bank. Um, and I ended up putting some uh, number two pliable non-hardening Permatex on there just to kind of help it out. Um, that's my Permatex of uh, my gasket maker sealant of choice right there. 
but anyway, this, this took a while, and uh, I tried to save you all the, the hassle of watching it. Well, guys, you can see where uh, when I was blowing it off, I went ahead and blow, blew, blowed, blowed out, blew out the spark plug ports, and see all the junk that come out. Oil. I think there's a little bit of rusty water. So that intake was leaking, and uh, it was leaking down into the spark plug uh, boot holes, and. That, uh, that's something we're going to be solving with the new intake. So that's good. I just have to wipe this all off and get it all clean again. Well, guys, we are back at it. Um, I got the two intakes here pretty much side by side. And they are identical pretty much. Um... I do have some plugs because this this unit right here has some ports in it but this one doesn't so I have some plugs that come with the kit right here and right here is where they need to go I got I just got raised little areas on on this one so I got to put plugs in there so uh, got to get my pipe dope out and I've got to take off this uh, damper. It's in the bottom here. It's all deteriorated and and coming apart on me. And I really don't like that because I don't want anything to fall down in the engine while I'm while I'm putting it on. So. I'm going to get both hands and I'm going to take this off very carefully, trying to keep it together while I'm doing it. Well, you see guys, I got it off. It comes off very easy, but um, got to be very careful with it because you see pieces are, are breaking off all over the place. And uh, like I said, I just don't want anything to break off and you know I don't care about it falling down in the valley I don't want anything to fall on my mounting surface while I'm uh, while I'm putting it in there so it's been uh, it's been a week since I've been in this thing so I'm gonna wipe all that off again of course take the rags out or the shop towels or whatever but let me get the uh, pipe dope and I'll get these these plugs put in. I'll show you my kit that it come with. It's pretty cool. I didn't know I could have even had this because I hadn't had this open. But if you can look in here, it come with the with the new bracket for the alternator. In there is a thermostat, and let me let me get this open. I can't get this open with one hand. Well, here's everything it comes with. Um, I got the thermostat and a gasket and uh, some mounting hardware and plugs. I'm not gonna need it all because I already have the bracket. I'm I might just replace the bracket so I have a new one on there, but. I've already got it anyway so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get these plugs inserted and get the thermostat put in and then uh, we'll start rocking and rolling all right guys I've got the plugs put in got them installed I use some uh, permatex uh, well, I gotta put the lid back on that thing use some permatex uh, thread sealant 
Teflon thread sealant. Had it for a while. Um, anyway, put it on there, that messy stuff. But it works good. I haven't put the um, thermostat in yet because uh, I don't want it rattling around in there until I get everything put together. Uh, I did notice that uh, some of these some of these ports on the new one do not have the little brass insert in there and that's why they provided these little self tapping screws I guess so you can go ahead and put them in there and I'm assuming that they're gonna have the same things for the injectors because the, I mean the, I'm sorry, injectors coil pack. So let's see here. There's eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then there's two left over. Yeah. They only give you enough for these two. And, uh, and these eight coil packs. So <laughs> don't lose them looks like the where the injectors go these are the, the bolts that hold the injectors down the rack um, they're all they're all threaded with the brass insert so I like that well it looks like guys ready to put the damper on and uh, slap it on there and go ahead and set this joker set this joker in there um, now what I am going to do, well, I need to get my light on the subject here, so you guys and I both can see better, but what I'm going to do is, I don't know if you can see how bad this thing is pitted around here, and that's in the general vicinity of where it seals at. I'm going to wipe this all down again. Even though I've wire brushed it and everything. I'm going to wipe it down. And back here in the back, it's the same way. So I'm going to... I'm going to put a little bit of Permatex on there. Uh, I, I don't use Permatex that uh, most people use. I use uh, number two, pliable non-hardening Permatex. It's black. And uh, I'll show you. Well, guys, I got the damper sitting up here, and I went ahead and I test fitted it in in the valley there. Um, I, by the way, I've already got the the uh, rags out of there, or the shop towels, and I've already got that blown off the surface, and I've already got it. Um, I vacuumed out the ports. Uh, just to make sure I run the vacuum down in there in case there was any debris or anything that dropped down in there. I haven't put the Permatex on there yet, but I'm going to slather that on. But what I was concerned about with this is any parts breaking off while I'm putting it in there and falling on top of the mating surface. I think the only thing that would, that would break off and fall in there that could is this edge right here and these this edge it's so brittle and it's coming off anyway so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut to the chase I'm breaking all this stuff off and throwing it in the trash Look how brittle that stuff is, guys. Um, but I think that's the only thing that could come off. Just imagine, look at that, a piece just fell down there. Just imagine if one of these pieces broke off and fell on top of the mating surface. Uh, there'd be a heck of a leak. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, get this cleaned up, and, and then I'll go ahead and put it on the, on the unit, on the uh, intake, 
and drop it on in here. I had considered putting this in there, putting this uh, sound deadening thing in there first and then setting the intake on top and it doesn't look like it's going to work like that. Um, this is too much of a molded unit and I can't get I can't get the intake up and drop it down in there because the intake has to kind of slide in. Um, it's kind of like launching a boat. It has to slide in there. So I don't think that that's going to work. So I, I got to put this on first, get it on there, and then then drop it in. I've cleaned that valley out the best I can. I got all the big stuff out of there. Um, you know, if it was you could send this thing to a dealer and get this done and they wouldn't clean it as much as I did so let me get this put on all right guys I'm setting the intake in this damper right here push on this thing too hard. It, it's so crumbly. I tried to buy a new one and I couldn't find any online. It would have been nice. I would have bought a new one. Alright guys, I'm going to put this Permatex on these little void areas here. Alright guys, let me take you in there and show you. Put some around there. Right over here. And then, I don't know if you can see back there in the back. Like there in the back is, like I said, there's a spot it was leaking before. So, that'll give me a little peace of mind. Let's go ahead and set this big puppy in there. Down. Looks like it's all the way down there, guys. The damper was actually holding me up a little bit. Maybe it wasn't on there all the way. I was kind of afraid to, you know, press it on there real good because it was crumbling. But this feels, this feels good. It feels nice and tight. Looks all lined up. I'm going to drop this thermostat in, put a little O-ring seal on top, alright, I got some WD-40 on them too. Get these all lined up, situated.
Always start these with your fingers, guys. Don't start them. Don't start them with an impact or something like that. That one started. All right. We're going to use a little small baby ratchet here. We're not putting much pressure at all. Oh yeah, that's going nicely. Well, we're not gonna we're not gonna snug them up yet. We're gonna get all the bolts in. You know guys, remember what a pain these bolts were coming out? Well, got a solution for that. I'm putting some never seize on them. That's all you need to put. Won't have no more issues with them coming out. Just go along one side of them. Drop them on in. Well guys, I went ahead and I snugged up all the bolts. Um, I really didn't do it in uh, torque sequence, but I just got them all just where they were snugged up and you know, a few turns past the mating surface there. Um, I will get the torque wrench a little bit later and I'll go ahead and torque them down. But at this point, I was just snugging them up uh, to last another week because I wasn't going to be working on it again until next weekend. So uh, the next clip that you're going to see will be the following weekend, and I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll torque it on down. Well, guys, we're back at it. Um, how long has it been for you? I, I know it hadn't been that long, but for me, it's been like three weeks. And, uh, you know, I keep getting pulled off of this job, and, I, and I'm working on other jobs. And, you know, my wife's calling me away for parties. In fact, we got one tomorrow. You know, it's the holiday season. So, uh, but it, it makes it hard with a job like this. This is really not that hard of a of a job this can be done in a weekend but uh, I started on it late the first night and uh, don't 
don't do it like I'm doing it, guys. Uh, it just uh, it don't work out that way because it. Let me show you this bracket up here. This bracket, I I forgot where it even went, and I had to rewatch my video, which is sad. But anyway, it goes back here in the back. Uh, really, I don't I don't really even need to put it on. But um, I know I've said that before about that other video. It goes back here somewhere like this or yeah like this yeah that's how it goes it goes like that on there and what that is for it's called the heat shield nothing at all goes on it nothing at all because um, what I found out on this bracket right here and on this bracket over over here that I hate so much the hard one to get out uh, the only purpose of them two brackets is for the uh, throttle cable to run around and go to the intake and on this particular car because I have a newer model this is a drive-by-wire so I don't have a throttle cable I don't have a you know a kick down for the transmission I don't have none of that so them brackets are just remembrances of days gone by they're just there for for the show now and they really don't have to go back on but I'm gonna go ahead and put I'm gonna go ahead and put both of them back on um, I'm just not gonna I'm not gonna put this hard to get to bolt in the back if I've ever got to take this thing off again you see that bolt is right right there you can see the head where where it bolts in and what a hard son of a gun to get to um, like I said I had my son come out here and get to it and the best way to access it is actually from this side right here and reach your arm in through there if you've got a nice skinny arm like my son does uh, it's still difficult but he got it um, I, after I got it broke loose but uh, anyway that's what them two brackets are for guys so do with them what you will I was gonna go ahead and cut this one off um, I was gonna cut it off right there where that big hole is because uh, I really only need this piece here for a spacer to put the bolt in to hold the intake down that's all I need it for otherwise I, I wouldn't put it on at all but um, I just I just leave it on okay enough talk about that let's get to uh, let's get to putting this uh, fuel rack back in I have already I've been spraying these down every time I think about it I'll come through and I'll spray these down with some carburetor cleaner and I got them injectors pretty clean I've wiped them off a couple times and you know I don't have my glasses on but they look pretty good to me and the car was running good and these you know these injectors are nothing to, to take off if I if I ever wanted to replace on them or uh, clean them or whatever it, it's it's really nothing um, I really the way I did it I didn't even take the you know it's got a flexible rubber fuel line here right here so I didn't even take anything loose to uh, you know to flip this around didn't even relieve the pressure so uh, it, it's it's really not that hard I'm just gonna slap them back in there I'm gonna put the hook up the uh, coil packs after I get them put in and uh, the first thing I'm gonna do right now is spray everything down with WD-40 where it'll it'll slide right in there and I won't have uh, I won't have any issues now all I got is this no straw WD-40 but I'm gonna douse these good to where you know whenever I go to put them in there they go in all right.
I still have to uh, I still have to torque these bolts down. I only only snugged them up. All right, all right, we got that real good. Right, I got my torque wrench right here. I just got to get my uh, reducer here because that's half inch drive and uh, we'll get to torquing well guys the way you're supposed to do it and let me use my wrench here as a pointer you're supposed to go one two three four five six then seven and eight back there and nine over here well you can't do that because that bracket that I was talking about right here um, you can't you can't put that bolt in or you never can tighten this up you can't get to the back one so you have to omit that one so you have to end up going one two four you have to skip number three here and then after you get them all tightened up, then you put that bracket in and tighten it up. But that's the only way you can do it. Uh, there's, there's really no other way. And uh, if you don't believe me, I will show you. Once you put, once you put that, that nasty bracket in there, see it, it covers up. It covers up that that bolt there that's the way it goes in it covers up that bolt and although there is a hole in it they got a hole yeah there I put a hole where you go straight to there well there's firewall is in the way so it can't really be done that way and uh, look this bracket is a pain even when there's no bolt in there still a pain Ugh. Anyway, a bracket that does nothing, nothing for me. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think maybe the older models, the cruise control might even sit on that thing. Not really sure. Cruise control module. Anyway, um, let me go ahead and get, get to torque in here. I'll set this camera up where you guys can see. All right, guys, this is um, 18 foot-pounds I have this torque wrench already set to. So, uh, I don't know if you can see it, set to 18 foot-pounds. All right, guys, you may or may not have, uh, I'm not sure if I included it in the video or not, but um, I asked uh, Google and uh, it uh, gave me the conversion rate from foot pounds to inch pounds. So I have that and I'm gonna use this wrench to get in there, hopefully, and get that, get that bolt that I can't seem to get with what I got. You understand that? So the conversion rate, if I didn't play it uh, on the video, is 216 for, for foot pounds to inch pounds. Uh, shoot, and that won't fit in there either. Well, let me see. I'll find another combination here.
Well, you see these coal packs are, are kind of nasty. I'm gonna try to clean them up a little bit, but you know, they're so easy to change that um, I, I'm not gonna replace them. I got new ones already, but uh, no sense wasting them. See, little WD-40 cleans them right up. And then we can just pop them right on in in no particular order, by the way. Oh yeah. This new um, intake, it, it come with its own little screws. These little screws right here self tap right on into the plastic. I'm not a real big fan of it because I've had some of these already where I've replaced the uh, replaced the coil packs and they're they're stripped out already. So that's not good. Uh, guys now the fuel rack goes back on here and you know we've already lubricated the ports but let's lubricate these uh, o-rings here ain't gonna hurt nothing you know all right now we gotta work this up under here
Well, guys, we're taking a bracket off. We're going to leave that right there. Yipper. It goes behind that bracket. Let's try that. All righty then. Get up underneath there. Over the hill and through the woods. All right, we're lined up over here. Oh yeah, we're in good there, guys. All right, get them all lined up. Right, they're all in place. I went inside, I had some breakfast that my beautiful wife cooked me, it was really good. Now it's time to get back to it. Well, I think it's time I put that uh, stupid bracket back on here. Um, I know there's going to be haters out there that want to hate on me for not putting that bolt in the back. Um, and I figure somebody might say something about oh it's gonna vibrate and it's gonna do this and that well i bent that bracket up a little bit I, I, I torqued it a little bit so it's not gonna be on that um it's not gonna be on the head it's not gonna be vibrating on the head or any such thing so let me get this in back in here there that's what it was that's the annoying spot it was at Alright, and I'm going to put some Never Seize on this here, because there is corrosion on it, and this will stop it. Find that hole, get it in there good and finger tight. Wiggle it just a little bit. All right. All right. This one is also supposed to be torqued down to 18. So we're going to torque it down right there. All right. It's time to plug them injectors back in, but we're going to put some of the... Uh, dielectric grease on them first. We'll smooth some of this in here. Keep them well protected from the weather and the elements. 
corrosion. That way, let's get that throttle body set on there. I'm gonna have to drag that across here. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of WD-40 on there so that can slide across that O-ring. This little gasket right here, guys, I'm gonna put just a little bit of uh, Permatex on here so it'll hold it on and uh, not let it fall because remember how when I took it off, it fell right away. Just put enough on there to hold it. Well, to hold it after I get it on there. Here we go. And it's only going to be stuck to the EGR side. So if I ever need to take this off again, it should stay stuck on there and I don't have to worry about it. See that? This has been set in about three weeks, and I don't know if you can see it. There's already a little spider web in there. So, if you get a look, I was going to clean that intake out right there, but I don't think I'm going to do it. I want to get this thing back together, and this comes off easy enough. I am going to clean that mating surface right there, though. I'm going to clean that up. Okay guys, there you go. I cleaned it. I couldn't not clean it. Clean the throttle body too. Um, so now, clean the mating surface. So now I'm going to go ahead and put it on there. Uh, I'm going to squirt a little bit more WD-40 here on it. To, because I'm going to be sliding it across that O-ring, like I said. It's all clean. where it should be.
boost right now. Well, let's try it out. guys you know that's it for this video we uh, we got the car running we got the intake put on uh, it's not leaking water anymore um, we haven't had it running for long we only had it running for five minutes but uh, as you can see I got to go to a party so we got to wrap this thing up here and I got to zoom on out the door so uh, until next time, I want to thank you all for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and, uh, you know, give me a thumbs up every now and then or a comment. I appreciate it. And until next time, guys, see ya.